In this video, we are going to install Flutter. I'm not a technical person, and after following a number of videos for a couple of days and failing to make connections work, I came up with this approach to installing Flutter. It includes a number of components. Flutter is an app to help you develop applications for iOS, Android, and other platforms. So if you're a developer, there are many other excellent videos out there. If you're a newbie like me trying to figure it out, Here's how I went about getting this done, and hopefully this video will help you install Flutter and be able to use it without learning about the underlying connections and connectivity between the applications. Almost all Flutter installations use some kind of code writer. In this case, we'll be using VS Code, and that's Visual Studio Code. And then with Visual Studio Code, we'll connect to Flutter, and we'll have to do a little bit of adjustment with the terminal. And the terminal sets paths so that the programs know where to look for what they need. Finally, to make it all work, if you're on the iOS universe, we'll need to download Xcode. And then there's always a simulator. So here are the key steps. One is we get Visual Studio Code, Flutter, Terminal, Xcode, Simulator. And then we'll also look at the Activity Monitor. So here we are. Let's go to visualstudio.com or code.visualstudio.com. And we can see here that there's a lot of choices. And one of the things about Visual Studio is it will let you connect with and run many programs. So let's go to code.visualstudio.com. And we'll see right here that's a Windows option, a Debian, a Red Hat, and a Mac. And within the Mac, there's an Intel chip and Apple Silicon. Since I'm running an M1, we're going to use the Apple Silicon. We downloaded the VS Code and go look at the download file. We'll see that VS Code has been downloaded. What we need to do now is to drag Visual Studio Code into the Applications folder right here. And that's part one of this process completely. Let's go to Applications and take a look. And there's Visual Studio Code. Let's click and run it just to take a look at it and let's open it. And this is what Visual Studio Code looks like. On the left, there are some icons for the Explorer, Search, Sources, Run and Extensions. We want the extensions. You can see I've already installed Dart or Flutter and what we need to do is install that. So we'll uninstall and reinstall this so you can see what it's like. Just type in Flutter. Flutter will pop up. We want the Dart code. Click on that and then move over. We'll uninstall it here and then we'll reinstall it. There, it's uninstalled. Now let's install it. And that's all it takes to set up the Flutter connection. Next, let's go back to the Flutter website and see what the recommendations are for iOS to know whether your hardware can run this. It requires a minimum of four cores and some memory, the operating system, the text editor, and it says download and install Flutter. So this is the actual install of the Flutter app for the Mac OS. And then see those instructions down there in bullet three that talk about commands to type into terminal. We'll come back to some of that later. Let's hit the Flutter Mac install. Go back to the Downloads folder. We can see it's still downloading. That's a 1.58 gigabyte file. And now looking at the Downloads folder, we can see Flutter is out there. And what we need to do is to move this into a development folder. A number of videos will use different folders, but for simplicity, just go back to your hard drive, go to Users, and then to your root directory, in my case, MacMingle, and there you need to create a directory called Development. Once Development's been created, we drag Flutter and drop it into Development. Next, let's open up Terminal and zoom into that Terminal window and type in nano dot 
zshrc, and this is the command that needs to be in that file. That's assuming you set up that development file. And if it's not that, type that in and then exit. So that's one of the pointers that tells the program where to go for the tools that it needs to run Flutter. Next, let's run Flutter Doctor. This tells us what's installed and what's missing. Let's zoom out and make that screen a little larger so we can see. This tells us that Flutter itself is installed. The Android tool chain is not installed and we chose not to do that. It also tells us that Xcode is not installed. Chrome is, the Android Studio is not, and VS Code and connected devices are all up and running. So since this is not installed and we're not doing that, we can skip that. However, we do need to go get the Xcode. And then there's a command under there that you need to type into terminal at some point after installing Xcode. We'll come back to that too. Move over to the App Store and search for Xcode. Download the Xcode. This will take a little while. Uh, it's a pretty large application. And we've sped up the screens here. And Xcode is downloaded. Let's go back to the terminal and type in this command. And that command, Xcode dash select dash dash install should install Xcode. I see a typo here. Let's correct that. We'll run it as a administrator. So we'll type sudo ahead of it. sudo Xcode dash select S-E-L-E-C-T space dash dash install. It asks for your machine or user password. Go ahead and type that in and it'll go ahead and install it. Next, let's activate the license or agree to the license. Again, at the administrator level, sudo xcode build dash license. And now we're asked to read it and agree to the terms of the software license. I typed in agree and that's done. Let's clear the screen and type that we saw earlier in the screen, which is Xcode select switch applications, Xcode app contents developer. And that's executed. Next, let's create an app. Flutter create my first app. There's a default app that's created that we can use to validate whether or not our installation is successful. It says it's created and the application code is in my first tab library. So we'll change over to the directory CD my first app and then flutter run. Keep in mind, this is an M1 with eight gig. So it's a little slower. And now we have a choice to make, which is, do we want to run this on a Mac OS, a Mac designed for iPad or a Chrome? We'll choose one, just run it on the screen so we can see what it looks like. And there's the application. When you click that plus sign at the bottom, the number changes. This is a template application that's a default and the code is out there in this directory under main.dart. And so you can go and then change that code to make it your application. Next, let's look at the simulator. I've got the iPhone 15 Pro set up as the simulator. There are places in Xcode where we can add other devices. I click that and the iPhone 15 Pro simulator opens up. Now that the simulator is open, Let's try and run the app again. And the command is flutter run. It 
If we watch the simulator, we'll see the code begin to run on the phone. There it is. The Flutter app has been created and launched. And on that app, if you click that plus sign, that count goes up from zero. And the app works. Now let's look at the activity monitor to see what this is doing to the M1. We can see that we have two gigs of swap memory being used. The eight gigs is not sufficient for it to run. And we can see that the memory pressure is pretty high. If we look at the CPU load, we can see that it's also running at a decent clip, almost 60%. Energy usage, disk utilization, writes, ins and outs. So the memory load remains high while the simulator is running. Let's look at closing the simulator and see what that does to the memory usage. Now we don't always need to run it in simulator to test a program. We can do that with the OS environment and then come back to the final testing here. As soon as we close that simulator, the memory usage falls. So an 8 gig M1 works really hard to run this Flutter installation, but it does work. So let's now close Xcode, close the uh, Flutter windows, finders. Confirm that Xcode and Visual Studio Code are in the applications and close that. And then let's exit out of terminal. Let's click open Visual Studio Code just to take another look at it. And we can see that the, the Flutter Dart code is installed. Let's exit Visual Studio Code. And those are all the steps to get it installed. So set up Visual Studio Code, activate Flutter, download Flutter, Activate Terminal, type some codes in for Path, download Xcode, make sure you activate it and license it, and then run the simulator in Xcode and run the program, the default program. You can go in there to main.dart to make changes. Now here in Xcode, we can see that there's an opportunity to change the device. By selecting the file, and you can open a new simulator, and or you can open a simulator that's already there. I've used the 15 Pro. And that's pretty much all there is to it. In the next video, we'll talk about opening a new video and writing a basic Hello World code. Thanks for watching.